If I say your mother, will you say revenue? If I say your wife, will you say revenue? If I say your children, will you say revenue? Then why is it when we say temple, you're saying revenue? Because when East India Company took over the temples, they put the temples in the revenue department, most appropriate. Because they didn't come here out of their love for the deities for which we were willing to shed our life. They came here because of the revenue, the wealth, the gold, the diamonds, the land. This land, particularly Tamil Nadu, has been a land of devotion. The biggest names in Tamil Nadu are the great sages, saints and seers and siddhas, the Nine Mars, the Alvars, Avayar, many, many others. We count our history with sages and saints, not just with achievements of the kings. In this land of devotion, where devotion is the core, the heart of Tamil Nadu is devotion. In this land, many immensely beautiful temples were created. We first built the temple. We ourselves lived in shacks, small huts, it didn't matter, but a grand temple. Right now the problem is, I've been talking to so many people, if you say temple, they say revenue. <laughs> it's very appropriate because when East India Company took over the temples, they put the temples in the revenue department, most appropriate. Because they didn't come here out of their love for the deities for which we were willing to shed our life. They came here because of the revenue, the wealth, the gold, the diamonds, the land. Not love, not devotion, greed is the ruling force. Now we are still talking the same thing, if you say temple, you say revenue. <laughs> if… if I say Kaveri, people say revenue, what about the revenue? I know I shouldn't be speaking this language, but because so many people are not getting it, I'm saying this, please listen. If I say your mother, will you say revenue? If I say your wife, will you say revenue? If I say your children, will you say revenue? Then why is it when we say temple, you're saying revenue? It's shameful that we're talking about temples as revenue. It's not about revenue. It's not about land. Today when I say these temples should be in the hands of the devotees, some people say, why can't we take over the churches? Why can't we take over the mosques? Why can't we take over the Jain temples, Gurdwaras? No, you should not touch the mosque, you should not touch the church, you should not touch the Gurudwara or the Jain temple, because there is one injustice. You don't have to multiply that. Instead of solving the problem, you want to multiply the problem. Nobody has any right to take anybody's place of worship, whoever they are, whatever they believe in. If it means something to them, it means something to them, that's all. But in Tamil Nadu, eighty-seven percent of the population, their places of worship, unfortunately, is in the hands of the government. By default, not by intent, because the East India Company did it. What I am saying is, I am talking about the fundamental rights of the citizens of India, and I am talking about secularism, because in my understanding, to be secular means religion does not mess with the government, government does not mess with the religion. That's my idea of secularism. We must understand this, there's a profound science as to how these temples are built and above all, above all how they're consecrated. Here in Tamil Nadu, 
We have temples which have been consecrated by Agastya Muni, by Patanjali Maharishi, and many other sages and saints, particularly the Nine Mars. People think if they take a broom and sweep it, they're managing the temple. People think if they do two pujas, they're managing the temple. No, that is not the management of temple. There is much more intricate science involved in this. It is very important. This is in the hands of the devotees. It is very important that all of you should stand up to make this happen. It bleeds my heart to see that such great effort of the past, such sciences, such tremendous well-being that it brought to this culture, which left us in prosperity, that left us in various levels of scientific development, and above all, a culture which lived exuberantly. Today, we are in a process of decay. The UNESCO, oh, look at these guys, they've all come prepared <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>